Hello. Okay. This is Edward James Tag, and as you may or may not know, I run a group called PASI, which stands for Palladians and Syrians International. And I and with Tracy, Tracy Clark, I train star seeds, uh, initiate them or put them through their paces and help them and so forth. And so that's what that's all about. Now, Happy New Year's, everybody. Hello. Um, now I saw two. Well, I saw two movies: Spider Man, um, No No Way Home, or whatever, and also Matrix Number Four. And Mother Mary, my guide, um, told me twice before to watch the latest Spider Man. There's some very significant uh, messages for me, and it's got a really really good message. It's got a good feel to it. Uh, and then in the same day, I went and saw Matrix 4. But as I was going in, Mother Mary was just showing me, you'll be really, really disappointed. It had 65% on Rotten Tomatoes and um, don't expect anything. You can go from light entertainment, but you won't get anything out of it. And that was true. It was a complete waste of time. So why am I giving this talk now? Well, just to let you know, I've been training Starseeds for, well, I suppose long term for on and off for... 22 or 24 odd years but more recently um, in compression time um, you know with Passy probably only for about the last year so that said I want to give you a little bit of a heads up as to probably one um, the main struggles that starseeds go through and how they develop through those struggles and how they come to realize who they are and then live out that truth if you like, and then um, the process of what star seeds can do to develop through those struggles and how they develop. And uh, uh, and I'll be making references to Spider Man probably and and uh, Matrix all through this talk because I've just seen it and it's kind of exciting. That's just what it's like. So um, a a typical star seed really chooses quite a challenging life. And so those are the two things they choose, a challenging life, something to work against or, you know, with. And then secondly, they almost always choose to have at least one reptilian in their direct family. Or I didn't have reptilians in my family, but I had a reptilian foster mother that I lived with for six years. And you may have heard of my child abuse story, which I won't go into now. So uh, now we choose that for two reasons. First... Uh, it's like an amnesia. We're forgetting who we are. And then we're rediscovering ourselves. Now, why would we choose to have a form of amnesia so we can rediscover ourselves? Well, to become a, an effective teacher, you have to have had an experience of living in, you know, what they call the three-dimensional matrix, if you like. You know, the, the humdrum of planet Earth mentality. And then when you grow through those challenges and when you um, feel or discover that you're a starseed or you're an expanded form of consciousness or you're connected to God, then you can use those experiences to help and teach others. So the first one is amnesia. Now, why would you choose to have a reptilian in your family? Well, it's really simple. Planet, no, 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 the universe has been at battles and war, just like Star, Star Trek, Star Wars, um, Battlestar Galactica. Why do you think these science fiction movies about long-term galactic battles of forces of good and evil, why do you think they're so pernicious? Why do you think they come up in media all the time? I mean, even now, if I go on to Disney+, Plus, there was the Maladorian... And then now there's the the book of Boba Fett. I don't know who Boba Fett is, but anyway, he's a Star Wars character. So they keep, you know, churning out the grinder, the meat grinder, and producing more stories. Superheroes, Star Wars, Star Trek, they're just ongoing. And that's because you're in the same battle or the same consciousness-raising, ex you know, experiment or experience. So that's why we get a reptilian is that first we need to learn how to have power of our, our own fear. Having power over fear is probably the most important lesson on earth, and I can't stress that too much. It's very, very, very important. I'm training people right now. I'm training a person right now in spiritual enlightenment techniques, and this person has had a bit of a roller coaster ride before, and they want to know are they going to be safe, 
And so, yeah, for me, when I'm teaching like really huge expanded consciousness, like spiritual enlightenment, first I've got to find out their mental um, health history. I want to find out how stable they are. So going back to the reptilian thing, uh, overcoming fear, it's hugely important. I'll give you a perfect example. When I moved in here, this flat, this accommodation, hello, whoever's saying hello, Jeff and, Sh and Jane Lizard. When I moved in here, Three and a half years ago, I had a difficult neighbour. Sorry, something's in my tooth. <clears throat> and a difficult landlord, and a difficult neighbour back there, and another difficult neighbour back there. And it was almost like I was being tested. Well, it was. I was actually being tested. Mother Mary told me through my spiritual teacher, who channeled Palladians, that we test Edward every single day, and that's true. That's what your angels are here to do. They're here to put you through tests. And you're saying, well, scratch your head. And you're, well, that doesn't sound very, very nice of my angels. Why would they want to test me? You know, test test me? That sounds like, like you know, sticking the fork into the Sunday roast, but doing it every day just to kind of annoy you and peeve you off. Well, we have to get tested um, trial by fire because that's what planet Earth is all about. Planet Earth is dominated um, by reptilian control behind the scenes. I'm not going to go into the Illuminati and the movie The Matrix and all that. You, you'll work that out for yourself. I don't need to give you that talk. So overcoming tr fear is number one. Overcoming control or fear of reptilians is number two. I mean, or, or it's all part of the same package. It's very, 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 very important. So when I arrived here three and a half years ago, I, I had a, a reptilian neighbor and definitely a reptilian landlord and, and there were three of them i won't tell you who they are but one of them was just really nasty and they just really um, tried to rile me up i dug the back garden because they told me i could and then the mother who's also a reptilian saw that i dug up the garden and she threw a tiff with one of the other ones um, and then they said fill the garden and we didn't tell you you could do that and i said well actually you could um so i got all, all miffed and and um Anyway, long, sto long story short, um, now I have no fear, and I don't know how I overcame that process. I had to work on my own internal darkness and my own internal fear of my inner child and my own abuse and my own processes, but I did a lot of healing in the last three and a half years. And so, long story short, um, I just shifted my thinking around reptilians. I just, I just chose to see them as a very limited consciousness. And I chose to see them operating from fear. Now, when you understand what a reptilian is, a reptilian is essentially um, a Palladian that chose to sleep in a cave 15 billion years ago, which damaged their brain of the part of their brain that processes love. So therefore, they are robotic without love. So they kind of have like a loose memory of being all powerful. And I think that's why on planet Earth, reptilians are... Um, trying to control people or trying to steal or get energies you know psychic vampirism whatever you want to call it it's because they probably have a trace memory of having this beautiful connection to god um, and they know they haven't got it inside them so they've got to try and steal it somehow so they do that through all manner of manipulation and control but for a star seed the thing that we're here to do is that we're here to not buy into that game we're here to radiate our heart love love as much as we possibly can and just radiate it anyway and don't worry about the effect it has because love when it radiates and light it's always going to do good i mean end of end of the story it's going to do good so when you when you see reptilians or people operating from fear in a pitiful situation where they are just lacking in their consciousness or they're lacking heart love there's no point having an argument with them about that, you know. Um, I got annoyed yesterday because I saw a woman um, throw some paper on the um, on the on the tarmac of the uh, under not the underground the car park, and I could see that she was a reptilian. I was going to like have a go at her, you know, so go and pick your paper up. But I I didn't I didn't go into that much of, much of a, a detail. But it would be like if you were going to have an argument against a reptilian, it would be like you choosing to catch a f plane flight and flying to Africa and having an argument with some little meerkats in the desert that were having a squabble over a, a little bit of bread that someone thrown out the window. It would just be a little petty squabble. So when you have an argument with a reptilian, 
it's absolutely pointless. It's there's no point to it. It doesn't matter. Let it go. And I've almost wanted to, you know, say to Mother Mary, well, I want to speak my truth. You know, this is my truth. I need to speak up. But it doesn't matter. It's just like, let it all go. Let it all go. When you find your own light and when you work on your own inner demons and when you work with your wounded inner child and then you fill yourself up with love and you learn techniques with your inner child to um, overcompensate for that and just to tell yourself that you're beautiful and find that light and see the beauty. I'm actually getting emotional talking about it. When you do that, all that the darkness just falls away. It just falls away. It doesn't make any difference. You just radiate this beauty and this love and you see the truth inside you. And then all the pit, all the pettiness, it's just it's just like it's nothing. It's just nothing. <laughs> it's like um I won't go. I don't know if I'll go into the movie The Matrix and and that. But anyway, getting back on track. So, that's the two struggles that humans come into this world with, and how you overcome is that fear and 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 how they deal with reptilians. So once you've got that out of the way, the next stage is to find your light through um, inner child techniques or through meditation or through consciousness raising or whatever. And then also, the other thing is learning how to communicate with your angels, with your guides. Now, if you raise your vibration enough, it just becomes almost accidental. You know, there's the low level, like when you, you they tickle your eyebrow, or they'll show you 1111 on the clock, or you'll have a synchronicity, or you'll see a truck go by with a car number plate number with a number sequence, or it might even be a big message on the, on the truck, like Angel Transport, there's a company in New Zealand called Angel Transport on the side of a truck. Or you might see a white white feather. Now the point being is that angel communication, I've given talks on that before, it's it's a long, drawn out, complicated process, but this is what star seeds struggle with and then how they develop. So that's um, a simple pressy or a summary of how star seeds develop. So once you've got beyond the fear and once you've learnt to understand um, not to battle with reptilians, just like let them bygones be bygones, then you can be the, the person you're meant to be. And it's really that simple. So um, what's the purpose of, of being a starseed is to um, overcome your fear and then to realise your full potential. So what do I do to help people? Well, I um, I do a lot of that with people. So um, that's what a lot of these talks about, like realize, um, reassuring star seeds, not to worry about reptilians, not to worry about fear, um, claiming your true identity. Now I'll talk a little bit about Spider-Man and Matrix now because it does fit in. It's really really poignant and it's a beautiful beautiful story. Um, so. Uh, heads up, you know, I will be really revealing things about these movies, so if you not haven't seen them, just turn off now if you want to. Um, the boring thing about Spider-Man is they do have to, they do a rehash of past events, which is a little bit annoying. It's like the scriptwriters couldn't come up with any new stories, so they decided to dredge up all the old stuff. But what was really nice is that from the multiverse, they bring in all three actors from the past. Now I want to let you know that of all those three actors, only one of them is actually a star seed, and that's the very, very first one. Um, but it's just got a really beautiful feel to it, uh, and there's a lot of heart love in that movie, and it made me really, really emotional. And there was also a death in the scene, so the movie helped you deal with death. Um, it also helped, it dealt with forgetting, because um, they used a spell to make everybody forget again that um, Spider-Man was Peter Parker. So that was really interesting. But um, what was interesting about that film is that when I compared it with The Matrix 4, you could see starseed energy in this film. But when I saw Matrix number 4, um, it was really, really disappointing. It does have 65% on Rotten Tomatoes, but the, the main point is is that because... 
L Lana Wachowski and her sister, or you know, transgender brother turned sister, because they're both reptilians, and because Keanu Reeves is actually a reptilian. I used to think he was a starseed. A lot of people think he is, but he's not. If you look at his black, you know, cold eyes, and Keanu Reeves is very wooden the way he behaves, very wooden. There's just no no presence. In his in his real life, they say he's a real sweet guy. He's really nice. They see him riding around his motorcycle, and apparently he's really kind to people. But um, he actually is a reptilian. But the point I'm trying to make is that the Matrix was just a rehash. It was literally a rehash story. Um, but this time around, um, Keanu Reeves couldn't fly. He could do kung fu. But Trinity, she ended up saving him. And she was the one that could fly. So it was girl, reptilian girl power. Trinity, the actress, is actually a human, by the way. So the point, why am I talking about all of this? It's because when you compare the Starseed story versus the reptilian story you realize that the way reptilians operate is that uh, they don't have any real heart energy of them of them in themselves so they have to um, come up with skills and and pizzazz and what do I mean by that so Keanu Reeves could do um, kung fu and he could fly and so those were his superpowers now star seeds we don't get caught up in having a superpower uh, and that's the difference. So when you're looking at the New Age movement and when you're looking about the way that they train their students, this is the dead giveaway. And this is the comparison between Spider-Man and Matrix is that in the New Age movement, if it's run by a reptilian, they'll try and teach you superpowers like mind control or um, they want to be invisible or they want to teleport or they want to you know, manifest things from the multiverse or whatever. But as starseeds, we don't need to get caught up in that. Because when you're a starseed and you realize that you already radiate love and you're already essentially a god from 15 billion years full of connection to God, that um, you don't need to chase anything. You don't need to achieve anything. So that's the most important thing I want to bring through in today's talk is that just being a starseed is enough. You don't need to gain anything. You don't need to prove anything. You don't need to be anything. You don't need to have anything. You definitely don't need superpowers. Although, having said that, when you do develop and, and raise your vibration, you do get a very powerful ability to co connect with angels and communicate and have knowledge. Um, <clears throat> so your psychic abilities, just they just go through the roof. And, and when you get full of love, Yes, so Anna says love is the superpower. That's right, love is the superpower. Um, I'm really, really pleased you said that, Anna. So um, all the res razzmatazz that reptilians teach in the New Age movement is similar to the movie The Matrix. You know, they want to give you superpowers. They want to give you mind control or they want to, you know, eventually you can fly or you can be jack jacked into The Matrix and you can achieve this, that and the other. So... That's the point. So getting back to a summary of what starseeds struggle with, they struggle with fear and they struggle with um, having reptilians in their life and overcoming that. And then how they develop is they um, work on their, their own inner darkness, their own inner child, their own um, self-shame and self-hatred and um, grief and guilt and regret um, and heal themselves and find their inner light. Um, so you don't have to be anything. You don't have to achieve anything. Um, you already are. So when I meet a new starseed like on Passy or otherwise, I can already see light in them. Like when you when you see a starseed, even if they don't even know they're starseed, they just radiate. Now on that, I'll give you a funny story. Like when I had fear well, power over my fear, particularly here living where I am and with my landlords. And I knew that I, when I found out they were reptilians, I thought, oh, it makes perfect sense. Now I know why I feel uncomfortable around my landlord or landlords. Uh, and then and then when I worked on my own inner shame and my own inner, inner battles and I healed myself and I let go of my fear of the reptilians... Um, because once you know that they're reptilians, you can go, oh, that's why I feel that way. That's why they seem to have this power or fear over me. I can just let it go. It's like 
squabbling meerkats over over a loaf of bread. It's just it's it doesn't mean anything. And then my landlord actually went through a really nasty yelling screaming divorce the other day the other week and even though he's a reptilian I actually felt sorry for him so i baked him a cake and then the following week i baked him another cake and then i baked him some pikelet some um, pikelets and put some golden syrup on them and he was really 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 appreciative he just sort of smiled and beamed and he just because reptilians are really really simple you don't have to worry about you just have to pay them compliments and make them feel important and give them gifts and listen to them and um, take them seriously. That's all a reptilian wants. They just want control and they want to be adored. So if you play that game, you just have them like a puppet on a string. You just let it go. So anyway, when I had power over my fear of reptilians, they sold this property and I've now got new landlords and I've met them. I've only saw the woman and the man from the side and the woman smiled at me. But I have a strong feeling that the woman... And maybe the man, maybe they they both feel like starseeds. So I've got these really beautiful, really, really beautiful new landlords. And I thought, well, oh, my God, like I could have gone into a panic. And that was my test. I could have thought, oh, my God, like I've got, I've low, I have reptilian landlords and they're all around me and I've got to leave. And and there's and they're going to find some way to get me out. And and I was stirred up in a fear around that. And then I just learned to let it go. And now I've and now because I've overcome that test because Mother Mary tells me that she tests me every single day, well I've had power over all of my tests, and now I'm just like giggling about it. It's like it's so funny that I could have ever been upset or worried about being around reptilians. They're they're really predictable. They're just like little puppets. You can just string them along. They just want to be adored and they want to have power over you. And if you you but you don't buy into their game. You just like dance around the edges just playing playing your own game with it and just let it go you let it go you let it go so now i've got two star seed landlords that have replaced it and so i don't have to move i mean i do believe i am going to move house eventually because this is not long term six months or, or probably six months or a year or a year and a half but i've passed all my tests uh, doesn't bother me anymore it's it's actually just like um a little frippery a little game so if you're a starseed, that's what you're here to do. You're here to let go of your fear. You're here to understand your relationship with starseeds and realize that, that as starseeds connected to God, we're all one big family. And this is something I get really, really emotional about. You know, I used, the other thing I was really worried about, I was really worried about my father dying. But since I put together Passy, I've, I've just got a huge family all around the world. I mean, you might say, oh, Edward, that just sounds a bit sort of... Um, it sounds a bit sort of fluff, or it sounds a little bit sort of insipid, but it's not. I've got to know people who are really, really, really beautiful, and they and they live and they sit in my heart every day for the rest of time, because <laughs> I I know them and I just I really really know them. And and as Stasis, we've existed for fifteen billion years. We're all just like family, like brothers and sisters. So. Um, the starseed life is very beautiful on earth. Like There was many, many years after my abuse in my foster home and after my struggle with being abandoned, you know, um, by my parents and their divorce, I was suicidal for many years. I mean, long, 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 long ago, like 20s and 30s. Um, but now every single day, because um, I have starseeds in my life that adore me and love me, I just feel, <laughs> I, I feel my superpower is... Um, peace and divine love and acceptance and um, just sitting present just 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 being with everything and uh, yeah it's a beautiful way to live to become completely without fear and to find the light inside you so I'm starting to get really emotional about all this but um yeah so anyway that's what starseeds struggle with and that's the path and that's what I teach um, Happy New Year to everybody. It's a good time to be alive. We're in COVID and some people ask me lots of questions. Can you please ask Mother Mary, you know, if the COVID vaccine's okay for me? Like, uh, and they get in all a tiz. And sure, I've been, I've talked to Mother Mary about that and I've helped many people with that worry. But it's a good time to be alive in planet Earth right now in this time in history. Um, it's an exciting world. It's an exciting time. 
uh, particularly the the young ones growing up. You know, you see the young star seeds with light in their eyes, and you see TikTok and funny little animals and people dancing on TikTok. It's a fun time to live, and it's a beautiful uh, feeling to start the new year. So I love you very, very much. Please talk to me if you're worried about anything. You have nothing to worry about. It's actually really, really easy. Once you let go of some of the, the mind games that we play with ourselves about how planet Earth and how it's all set up, you know, it feels like we're a victim or it feels like we're under the thumb. It's not. You have total power and command over everything. You have total power. Absolute power. That's, that's it. I love you lots. Big hugs. Air hug. And see you soon. Bye.